Today, we will talk about the wind triangle. A wind triangle is a graphical representation of how the wind affects an aircraft in flight, and it helps to determine relevant values for navigation, such as wind correction angle and ground speed. Now, this triangle is composed of the following segments. True course and ground speed, wind direction and speed, and true heading and true air speed. However, the way the triangle is constructed may vary slightly. So before we get into how to construct it, let's see the logic behind the wind triangle. For instance, let's look at this example of a boat trying to cross a river from point A to point B. Let's say there is no current. In this case, assuming that point B is exactly north of point A, the boat should sail with heading 0 degrees, and since there is no current, there will be no drift, and therefore the track will be 0 degrees as well. Now, let's analyze the same situation, but now with a current of 5 knots flowing from left to right in relation to the desired course. In this case, if the boat sails with a north heading, the current will deviate the boat to the right. Now, this 5 knot current implies that after 1 hour, it will push the boat 5 nautical miles off course. This means that after 30 minutes, the boat will be 2.5 miles off course, and after 60 minutes, it will be 5 miles off course. Now, if we analyze this situation, we can see that there is a triangle, which can be used to determine the drift angle, which in this case is 5 degrees. Therefore, under these conditions, with a north heading, the actual track will be 005. The same principle applies to an aircraft in flight. Let's say for example that an aircraft wants to fly from point A to point B with a desired course of 0 9 or 0 degrees. If there is no wind, there will be no drift, so the track will be 0 9 or 0 as well. However, if there is a 5-knot crosswind flowing from left to right in relation to the desired course, it will push the aircraft off course. This way, after 30 minutes of flight, the aircraft would be 2.5 miles off course. And after 60 minutes, it will be 5 miles off course. And here again, we can use this triangle to determine the drift angle of 5 degrees, which at the same time can be used to determine the actual track of the aircraft, which would be 0 9 or 5. With this, we can see that constructing a wind triangle is a useful way to solve wind problems graphically using geometry. However, we have to say that there are two main ways in which we can construct this triangle. For this video, we will refer to them as method A and method B. With the method A given a certain heading, true airspeed, and wind, we can determine the drift angle, the track, and the ground speed. While with method B, given a desired course or track, true airspeed, and wind, we can determine the wind correction angle, the corrected heading to be flown, and the ground speed. In both cases, the theoretical background is the same, but the way the triangle is constructed is slightly different. So using method A or B will depend on the kind of problem we are trying to solve. With this in mind, let's begin with method A. Here, the first step is to take a piece of paper and draw a straight line that represents the aircraft's heading in relation to true north. The length of this segment must be equivalent to the true airspeed. So let's say for example that the true heading is 081 and the true airspeed is 110 knots. Then, we draw a line that represents heading 081, as we can see here. Then, for the length, we can assume for example a scale of 1 knot equal to 1 millimeter. Therefore in this case, the length of this segment should be 110 millimeters. Having done this, the second step is to draw a line that represents the wind direction and speed, starting at the end of the heading true airspeed line that we draw previously. So let's say for example that the reported wind is 030 degrees at 20 knots. In this case, instinctively, we could draw a line like this. However, this is not correct, since wind direction is always reported as the direction from which the wind blows, and to build the triangle, we are interested in drawing the direction in which it goes, because that will be the direction in which it will push the aircraft. 
So then in this case, using 0 3 0 as reference, we draw a line in the opposite direction with a length of 20 mm, as we can see in this example. Then, after doing this, the third step is to complete the triangle by drawing a straight line that joins these segments, as we can see here. The length of this last segment will be equivalent to the expected ground speed, which in this case is 100 knots. And the angle between this segment and the heading true airspeed segment will be the drift angle, which in this case is 9 degrees. With this information, we can determine that the actual track of the aircraft would be 0 9 or 0. Now, in practical terms, what this triangle is telling us is that, with a wind of 0 3 0 degrees at 20 knots, an aircraft flying with a heading of 0 8 1 and a true airspeed of 110 knots, will actually be flying with a track of 0 9 or 0 degrees and a ground speed of 100 knots. Here we can see a summary of the different segments and components of this triangle, constructed using the method A. Now, let's have a look at method B. Here, the first step is to draw a long straight line that represents the desired true course of the route. In this example, let's say the desired course or track is 0 9 or 0, so we draw a line like this. As a side note here, the length of this segment does not matter for now, we will see later why. So having done this, the second step is to draw a line that represents the wind direction and speed, but here, unlike with the other triangle, we will draw this line starting from the tail of the true course line that we draw previously. So let's say that the reported wind is 0 3 0 degrees at 20 knots. In this case, just like in the previous triangle, we cannot draw a line with heading 0 3 0, because we are interested in representing the direction in which the wind is blowing, which in this case would be 210. And assuming in scale of 1 knot equal to 1 millimeter, the length of this segment should be 20 millimeters. Then, after doing this, we draw a line starting from the head of the wind segment, with a length that represents the true airspeed, to intercept the true course line. In this example, let's say the true airspeed is 110 knots. So then, the length of this last segment must be 110 mm, in such a way, that it intercepts the true course line of 0 9 or 0. Now, with the triangle already constructed, we measure the resulting length of the true course segment, which will be equivalent to the ground speed. In this example, the length is 100 mm, so the resulting ground speed would be 100 knots. Now, with this triangle, we can measure the angle between the heading true airspeed segment and the true course ground speed segment to determine the wind correction angle, which in this case is 9 degrees. However, if we analyze the direction of these lines, we can see that actually the correction angle would be negative, thus obtaining minus 9 degrees as a result. Now, knowing the wind correction angle and the true course, we can determine the resulting true heading, which would be 081. So basically, what this triangle is telling us, is that if we want to fly on a desired true course of 0 9 or 0 degrees with a true airspeed of 110 knots and a wind of 0 3 0 at 20 knots, we would have to fly with a true heading of 0 8 1, and we would get a ground speed of 100 knots. Here we can see a summary of the triangle constructed according to method B. So with this, we can see that although the results of both methods are practically the same, the focus used is different, so using method A or method B will depend on the type of problem we want to solve. Now, finally, wind forecasts may not be accurately met, or conditions may change suddenly during flight. So it is important to identify any deviation from the intended track and correct it. For example, in VFR flights we can use visual references along the route to return to the desired track, and we must be aware that if there is any change in the headwind or tailwind component, the flight time will be affected as well. Now, in case of IFR flights, we have to use the navigation instruments, such as a CDI to identify any deviation and correct it. A useful method to determine quickly the drift angle, and therefore calculate the required corrected heading, 
is the 1 in 60 rule, which we will discuss in detail in the next video. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.